Hey, how's it going guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to download StockHeat's local data from Yahoo Finance. All right, so this is a script that I use pretty frequently back in the day when I'm doing uh, trading. Let me show you my portfolio. So basically my uh, investment portfolio. I didn't start investing in stock until uh, a couple years ago when one of my friends suggested that I should uh, use Python to automate some of my uh, financial analysis. So I wrote a script to extra historical data for one to 2,000 companies from Yahoo Finance. And I wrote an algorithm to uh, pick the stock for me. And so far, I've made over $100,000, which is pretty good in my opinion. So I tell why not to share the uh, script with you guys. All right, so we'll be using uh, Yahoo Finance to uh, extra the data set. So first, you want to go to finance.yahoo.com slash quotes. And I'll be using uh, Tesla for this demonstration. Here, let me go ahead and import the Python library first. So for this exercise, I'll be using uh, three different libraries. The time library, date time library, and the pandas library. And the reason why I'm using pandas library is because this library allows you to easily uh, save the data set into different files, such as Excel file, CSV file, text file, or even JSON file. Now let me go back to Yahoo Finance. So if you want to go to historical data, and you'll have a couple options or parameters. And let's uh, change the start dates to December 1st. So here's this is going to be my uh, beginning period. 2020. So basically the month of December of 2020. So this is going to be my time period. For the uh, data type, I'm going to keep that as historical prices and frequencies. I'm going to change that to weekly for now. So we'll change that back later. Now what I want to do is I want to hover my mouse to this download link. Right click. I want to copy the link location. I'm going to create a variable. I'll name this variable query string. And I'll copy paste the uh, URL. Now, if we look at this URL, here's my uh, ticker. And after the question mark is my parameters. So this is going to be period one, period two, my interval value. And the rest is basically uh, the default uh, settings. And using this URL, we can make a request code to extract the historical data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the string to F string. So this allows me to directly uh, insert the variable name. In the query, I want to be able to manipulate uh, period one value, period two value. And noticing that here, uh, the uh, period values are in seconds. So when we provide our date range, we need to convert those date range values into seconds. And here's my interval value. Oh, and uh, ticker symbol. All right, so here let me go ahead and create my uh, variables first. The first parameter is the uh, ticker symbol. I'm going to assign Tesla period one, period two. And to insert the date value, so I'm going to use the uh, datetime dot datetime method. I'm going to assign the year value to 2020, December 1st. And because we're dealing with GMT time, so for the hour value, I like to uh, use 23. For the minute value, I'll set that to 59. I'll convert the daytime object to time tuple. Now I can take the uh, time module, the MK time. This function will convert uh, this output into second value. So let me, uh, let me do this. I'm going to highlight the code that I want to execute individually. Now I'm going to highlight uh, this thing right here. I'll run it. 
and that's going to give me the second value. And noticing that here we have a, a one decimal point. So I need to remove that decimal point by converting the value into integer. I can take this statement, copy and paste. I'll change the uh, date value to 31st. And the last parameter is the uh, interval. I'll set that to uh, one week. So for one week, it's going to be one WK. And if I want to set the interval to daily, then it's going to be one D. And for monthly, it's going to be one M. Now we can uh, assign the uh, variables to our query string. And it's going to be ticker. And it's going to be period one. Period two. And interval. Now let me uh, run uh, this code block. All right, so if I print the query string, and if I open the URL in a new browser, it's going to give me this uh, pop out dialog, ask me to save the uh, data set in a CSV file. I'm going to cancel this. Now, what I can do is I can basically treat this as uh, an API call. I'll insert the pandas module, always the read CSV method to read the uh, query string. And I'll save the output as DF. Now, if I run uh, line 12, and if I print the DF object, and it's going to give me the uh, historical data set. Now, let me change the interval value to one day, so basically daily. And I'll change the ticker to Apple. In case if I want to save uh, the data set as a uh, CSV file or Excel file. So I can use the method to CSV or to Excel and followed by the uh, file path. But I'm going to skip that in uh, this exercise. And I'll simply just print the DF object. Now I'm going to terminate this session. And I'll run the script by itself. It should be pretty quick. Yeah. And here's my. Uh, historical data set for Apple from December 1st to December 31st of 2020. All right, so this is I want to share in this video, and hopefully you guys found the videos for. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.